Has your once in a lifetime love turned to pure hell? Do you feel like a boa constrictor has squeezed the life out of you and left you for dead? Now youth might think I'm exaggerating, but if you've been caught in the grip of a psychopath, you know that I'm not. It can be incredibly traumatic and life-changing. Many people believe that female psychopaths are uh, rare, even non-existent, and that they represent a very, very small fraction of all psychopaths. And while this may be true, this premise is being questioned, with some suggesting that female psychopaths are simply expressing their deceitful, manipulative, callous, ruthless, exploitative traits differently than males. Their feminine characteristics and conditioning around gender roles makes them harder to detect and potentially more likely to be diagnosed with another mental disorder such as borderline personality disorder. I'm Lisa Blunt. Today I'm talking about female psychopaths and 10 signs that you don't want to miss or ignore. At the end of this video, I will give you three key differences between a female psychopath and a female with BPD. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss anything. In this video, I'm referring specifically to factor one psychopathy, which along with many others, I believe has a different etiology than factor two psychopathy, and I will cover this in a separate video. But in essence, a psychopath is someone who is cold, callous, grandiose, egocentric, deceptive, impulsive, reckless, irresponsible, aggressive, lacking guilt, remorse, and empathy. So without shame, they exploit others for gain or for pleasure. Regardless of how many female psychopaths exist in society, it's important to remember that not all psychopaths are violent criminals in prison and many refrain from antisocial activities. In fact, some are in helping professions, even heroic professions. That said, the brain of a psychopath is wired differently, causing them to be dangerous, at least psychologically, to those close to them, and potentially dangerous in many other ways. So you need to recognize the signs early on, because once you're firmly in their grip, it's too late. Actually, yeah, yeah, it's amazing how strong it is. So keep in mind that uh, psychopaths comprise of a very small fraction of the population, 1-2%. to 2 And um, many of the points I'm going to make in this video apply to male psychopaths as well. Let's see if I can show you a little bit more about how this snake hunts. Okay, so in no particular order, number one, a psychopath is lacking or seriously limited in her ability to feel empathy, guilt, shame, remorse, fear, and other negative emotions. The female psychopath, however, tends to be very good at faking emotional responses, especially when she needs to, like in the beginning of the relationship or when she's in public. However, she doesn't feel bad when she does something wrong, um, she doesn't feel the need to apologize or take responsibility for harmful actions, and she may not even get why you're so hurt. And if she does, she sees it as your problem. You're too sensitive. Number two, one emotion that is not dampened in psychopaths is anger. They are prone to adult temper tantrums, uh, angry outbursts, fits of rage. Where the male psychopath may be prone to yelling uh, and having outbursts at work or in public, um, this might be as an emotional release or a way to hijack your fear response in order to manipulate or exploit you, the female psychopath lashes out more in covert, indirect ways. Number three, the female psychopath uses logic over emotions to make decisions, same as the male. They rationalize, intellectualize, and objectify people and situations, and they like it this way. They feel superior in the fact that they are not controlled by emotions. Number four, like the female covert narcissist, the psychopath preys on Phil. The protector provider, hero savior, that guy with high integrity who is loving and loyal. And let's face it, we all love Phil, but in the hands of a narcissist, Phil's amazing qualities will be used against him, and in the hands of a psychopath, they will be used to destroy him. 
Although Phil makes a perfect target and makes things a whole lot easier for the female psychopath, she can make do with other personality types. But there are some prerequisites and because I like to create acronyms, I'll call this personality type Cole. Cole is competitive and cooperative. Once invested, he gives it his all, doesn't give up. He doesn't quit even when the going gets tough. He doesn't accept failure and will go the extra mile to try and win or even make sure everyone wins. He believes that if he works hard enough, does the right things, there will be a trophy or reward at the end of it all. The female psychopath likes a challenge and she enjoys breaking down a strong man with a competitive spirit. She uh, will allow him to lead at first, to be in charge, and then slowly, subtly test his boundaries, his compliance, his willingness to cooperate and obey. The O is for optimism. Cole is trusting. His core belief is that people are inherently good. He gives people the benefit of the doubt, even when he sees the red flags. He will swat his intuition away, believing the words coming out of her mouth, even though they go completely against her actions and his intuition. He tries to rationalize her odd behavior and gets stuck in a maze of doubt, confusion, and he really hopes he's wrong and that happily ever after is still possible. And this is not because Cole is lacking intelligence. It's because at his core, he believes she's a good person. He believes that if he gives her what she needs, uh, he can save her and heal her. But that is just not true. L is for longing. And like many, he's longing for that once in a lifetime love to fulfill his deepest needs and desires. So he easily buys into the fantasy, drinks her Kool-Aid and unknowingly allows her to infiltrate his system, hijacking him entirely. E is for empathy, sympathy, and a strong sense of guilt and obligation. Cole genuinely wants to help, which of course the psychopath completely uses to her advantage. She can easily use her victim card to make him feel obligated to help her and give her what she wants. Oh. Number five, she is incredibly adept at reading others. A psychopath hears what you're saying, but they also hear what you're not saying. Because they are so deceptive, they've learned not to listen so much to words, but rather to pay attention to nonverbals, micro expressions, body language, tones, and so on. People high in psychopathic traits seem to have this extra perceptive ability, which makes them seem like mind readers. And to you, this will feel like, wow, no one has ever understood me like this. This person sees me, hears me, validates me. It's like we've known each other forever. We're soulmates. And what I'm talking about here goes way beyond mirroring you. They are reading you. So for example, let's say you tell the psychopath something like, my mom was a single parent raising me and my little brother. She works three jobs to support us and I'm so grateful for everything she did for us. Now I do everything I can to help her financially uh, in any other way that I can. Now, a neurotypical person might think, wow, that's really great that you help your mom out um, after all that she's done for you. A psychopath hears a lot more. The psychopath hears you were alone most of your childhood. You had a roof over your head, but your mom wasn't there. You were lonely. You didn't get the love and nurturing that you needed. You had to take care of yourself and your brother. You have a lot of empathy. You have money. Uh, you're willing to give your money to help others and so on. Number six, psychopaths love to leverage your emotional weaknesses and personal information against you. They have no problem blackmailing you, discrediting you by gossiping, running smear campaigns, bullying, coercing, um, making up lies to ruin your reputation and your life. Males tend to use physical aggression and more violent methods of victimizing others, while female psychopaths rely more on relational aggression. 
when females are physically aggressive, they tend to blame it on the fact that they are getting out of an abusive relationship, for example. So they're blaming their past partner for their own behavior. Some psychopaths go to extremes and pretend to be the victim of an assault to get what they want or to get revenge. Uh, others may have a, you know, not show any weakness at all, often going to great lengths to hide any other vulnerabilities. But either way, they will use your vulnerabilities to tighten their grip on you. Oh, this tail's going around the back of my neck now. It's just finding places and ways of getting purchase to use its really strong muscles in choking me. Number seven, psychopaths do not have the ability to love and bond in the way that neurotypicals do. The psychopath is only attached to what you can give them and do for them. So you're interchangeable. The psychopath objectifies you and serves themselves to whatever you have. Their relationships are strategic rather than based on a need for love and connection. If you can help them get ahead, you are useful, period. And they will either discard you completely or emotionally when you are no longer of use. Or maybe just, you know, keep you on a shelf close by in case they need something in the future. Number eight, female psychopaths develop relationships with their victims. They don't typically prey on strangers the way male psychopaths do. So the closer you are to a female psychopath, the worse her abuse gets. Uh, she may be completely normal in public while abusing you and twisting up your mind in private. Number nine, the psychopath will quickly figure out exactly what you want to hear, what excites you, what you've been lacking. She may play the victim or the vixen card, often mixing both for an especially powerful spell over you. The female psychopath can be very fiery and fulfill your every fantasy, but it's just that, a fantasy, and soon she will be pulling her magic carpet from under you. Number 10, psychopaths can come across as hyper honest and super straightforward, but they can also easily cheat, lie, withhold information as needed. The psychopath loves providing half-truths. They love giving you information that will make you think, wow, they're being so honest. They didn't need to tell me that or give me that information, so they must be telling me the truth. But they are masters of deception and conning you to get what they want. The reality is that they are using you for power, money, sex, or whatever resources they need. So she will be lovely when she needs to be and ghost you or discard you when you're not convenient to her. You will be put on the shelf repeatedly and even after she discards you, you may find yourself still feeling guilty or obligated to help her when she intermittently reaches out. And almost without a doubt, you will be left spinning in confusion, ruminating and suffocating long after she's gone. And every time I breathe out, it just tightens a little bit more until eventually I can't get any air in or out of my lungs. So, unlike someone with borderline personality disorder, a psychopath is not fearful. They're not highly emotional, self-loathing, or filled with shame. Quite the opposite. The psychopath's fear response is dialed right down. Another key difference between a borderline and a psychopath is that the psychopath is not insecure. They know who they are. And although they do wear masks, they're not confused, nor do they need your approval, reassurance, or validation. A third key difference is that the borderline feels very guilty about their harmful words and behavior. Although they may not be able to control themselves in the moment, uh, they hate themselves for hurting you. And they tend to apologize sincerely, profusely, and repeatedly, whereas the psychopath only apologizes to look good, uh, to reel you back in, and to tighten her grip on you. Constricting basically means to strangle, to suffocate the life out of prey. So, be very, very wary of anyone who quickly zones in on you, uh, who is moving too fast, 
uh, too good to be true. Learn to recognize the signs and learn to protect and defend yourself from these psychological attacks. Again, once they hijack your system, they will keep you stuck in fear, guilt, confusion, causing you to lose confidence, uh, your sense of worth, your sense of self, your ability to think logically and independently. And if you do manage to get away, do not give her any further access to you. Stop answering her calls, texts, checking her social media accounts. No contact is the only way to go. And please stop trying to wrap your head around why she said this, that, or the other. Don't allow her to keep her grip on you. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. And to learn more about borderline personality disorder, please click on the link above.